Hi everyone. This is the first uh, slideshow that goes with the lab material. So this is going with lab one. I'm going to talk a little bit about um, safety guidelines and the language of anatomy. So very quickly um, with uh, safety guidelines, um, everything that you're, I mean, so you're dissecting a sheet brain at home and you're using um, Play-Doh or modeling clay with the skeleton. Um, I think that Play-Doh and modeling clay and the plastic skeleton are relatively safe things. Um, the sheet brain, I just want you to know that the, um, the chemical preservative in it is really considered very safe. I would not touch the sheet brain without gloves. It is something that can get into cells. Um, but it's not something that you need to worry about wearing a mask with or um, need to be panicked about, you know, if a little bit gets on your skin. If you were to get a cut while you were dissecting, as um, it mentions in the safety information, um, just, you know, rinse it out thoroughly and put a Band-Aid on it and you'll be okay. Um, you know, uh, you want to store it in a place where your kids or your dog cannot access it. It does not need to be in the refrigerator. It's shelf stable. Um, and when you're done with it, you're just going to put it in a Ziploc bag and throw it in the trash. Or if you don't have a Ziploc bag, you can just tie up the plastic bag that it comes in and throw it in the trash. Okay. Um, we'll talk about it more next week when we're um, working on the brain. But I've, I've gotten a few questions about it. I know that people are a little nervous. So I just wanted to let you know that um, that is the deal. Okay. So... Um, when we talk about anatomy, and uh, we need to have language to describe these things. And so in anatomy, we really kind of have a universal language, right? It's a uh, language based in Latin, mostly, a little bit of, uh, of Greek. Um, and it allows us to talk about all the different parts of the body um, with people from other countries and other languages, what have you. Um, it's very, the language is very standard. Um, and so here, this is a picture, um, you'll see this on your lab homework. And this is a picture that covers um, all the different um, terms for the different parts of the body. And I first want you to notice that this person is in what's called standard anatomical position. So whenever we talk about a patient, we, we imagine them as if they're standing up, palms facing forward, okay? And so every time we talk about somebody, we're talking about them in reference to standard anatomical position. Um, and the reason that we use this is so that it's very clear about what we're talking about when we're talking to our colleagues. Okay, we don't want to say, oh, you need to amputate the left leg um, and you're talking about the leg that's on your left, but it's actually the patient's right. That's no good, right? We're always talking about the patient and the patient in regards to the standard anatomical position. So this, um, if you don't currently have lab manual access, this photo and these terms are also covered in the textbook, okay? So you will be able to find that material there. So there's um, big terms like cephalic. So cephalic is talking about the whole head, right? And then we have frontal, which is on the top over here. We have orbital, which is the eye. Nasal is the nose. Um, buccal is um, the uh, cheek. Um, oris is the mouth, um, and um, a mental is the chin, okay? Um, below that, we have the cervical region of the neck. We have the thoracic region and the abdominal region. And below the abdominal region is the pelvic region. And then there's the pubic region. So wherever we have external genitalia is called the pubic region. Um, right here is the inguinal area. Um, and then we go to the lower limb. There's uh, the um, femoral region. Okay, the popliteal, sorry, that's the patellar region. <laughs> it's popliteal on the back. Um, and then we have curl and sural for the calf. Going down to the foot, 
the whole foot is considered the pedal region, the ankle bones are the tarsal region, the heel is the calcaneal region, the toes and the fingers are both called digits, and the big toe is the helix, um, and the thumb is the pollux. Okay, so I didn't cover everything, but I covered most of these things. And again, in your lab activity, you have a place to practice labeling these things. Um, and uh, it's, uh, there's a lot about it in your text. Um, I will be posting this slideshow as well. And so this slideshow also has table 1.1 from the lab manual. Um, and it goes through the, the verbal description of all of these different regions. Um, the, um, some people do better when they see the verbal description, so I try to incorporate both of those into my slideshow. Um, and again, I will post the slideshow so you are able to look at it later. Okay, here's just the second um, thing. All right, so... Um, directional terms. So we have anterior and posterior. So anterior, again, as we we're talking about in standard anatomical position, is what we think of as the front of the body. Posterior is the back of the body. Um, we can also use um, ventral. Ventral would be the front and dorsal is the back. Um, we have superior, which is anything that's above. Inferior is anything that's below. Um, and then we have these terms proximal and distal. And proximal and distal, people often confuse with superior and inferior, and they're not the same. Um, proximal and distal is talking only about the limbs and talking, it's a re they're relative terms. So distal means further away, proximal means closer. All right, so the knee is proximal to the, when compared to the foot, right? The foot would, foot would be thought of as distal, right? If you think of the knuckles on your toes, right, we have a both a um, proximal and distal knuckle. Um, so, you know, make sure it's a, it's a relative term. Um, and for any of you who are going into, um, uh, you know, the veterinary side of things, anterior and posterior um, is dependent on how you walk. So for dogs, anterior includes the head and the chest region. Posterior includes the the back end, the the um, the back and you know upper part of the head would be superior, and the limbs would be inferior. Um, when we're talking about um, about all these different things, we need to think about planes and sections as well. So we've talked a lot about anterior and posterior. And anterior and posterior essentially divides the body um, as it's like a frontal plane. So this middle one right here is the frontal plane. And a frontal plane is anything that divides the body into a front section and a back section, or an anterior and a posterior section. Okay, we also have the plane that divides the body into left and right parts. And so this plane is the sagittal plane. If it's directly down the middle, we call it either the median or the mid-sagittal plane. Um, and if it's off to either side, it's just the sagittal plane. And then here we have the transverse plane, and the transverse plane cuts the body into superior and inferior portions. And it's worth spending some time looking at these images and kind of seeing what we mean by a frontal section, a sagittal section, and a transverse section. Um, you'll have some, um, some practice with this by working with a, a Plato uh, person that you make and cutting them up and kind of re restructuring them. Um, the last thing that we're going to talk about uh, for this are the body cavities in the abdominal regions. So we have the dorsal body cavity and the ventral body cavities. So the dorsal body cavity is in yellow and it's broken into the cranial cavity and the vertebral cavity. The ventral body cavity is in red 
and it's broken into many different pieces. We have the, um, so this is the thoracic cavity. Um, and then the thoracic cavity is broken down into the pleural cavity and the pericardial cavity. Okay, right now, just, you know, no, it's plur this is the pleural, this whole region is the thoracic cavity, and where the heart is, is the pericardial cavity. Down here, we have the abdominal pelvic cavity, and which is broken into the abdominal cavity and the pelvic cavity. Um, and the last thing that I just want to cover quickly is um, we can break the abdomen into quarters or into nine regions. So the quadrants or the quarters of the quadrants are pretty easy. We have the right upper, the right lower, the left upper, and the left lower. And so in the right upper, we have the liver and the gallbladder, some of the intestines. The left upper, we have the stomach and the intestines. The right lower, it's intestines, um, appendix, and bladder. And the left lower is intestines and bladder. On the right side over here, we have these regions. Um, and so, um, so we're going to start at the umbilical region because that's what you know, right? You know your navel is your umbilicus. Um, and then so most of you probably also know that this region of your spine is called the lumbar region. And so here's the right lumbar region and here's the left lumbar region. Um, we're going to go up. So here, this is the hypochondriac region, and this is not a region that has a lot of complaints. Hypo means below. Here, chondro is actually referring to the cartilage in the ribs. Okay, so it's below the uh, cartilaginous ribs region. So we have the right and left hypochondriac region. And then we have the epigastric region. Epigastric means epi means covering or over and gastric means stomach so it's above the stomach um, and then we have three more regions to go through here is the hypogastric region or the pubic region so hypo means below gastric means stomach it's below the stomach um, and pubic is just the area where we have um, genitals um, and then we have on the right and left side um, this kind of crease, the crease between your abdomen and your hip is called the inguinal region. So you can either call it the right inguinal region and the left inguinal region, or you can call it the right iliac region and the left iliac region. One thing about anatomy is that there's many, many terms for different things. And so we all have to get comfortable with the many ways of describing things. I hope this video helps you understand terminology a little bit better. Um, and, um, you know, I will be on the lookout for your questions on the community help forum.